In the heart of every journey lies a story, a tale of endurance, courage, and the relentless spirit of a man who faced the darkness that slowly stole his sight. This is the story of Mr. Stephen Oluwafemi Idowu, a man whose world was filled with colors, shapes, and the vibrant energy of the youth. At the age of 15, Mr. Stevens' world began to blow, colors faded, shapes became shadows, and the reality of his condition started to take hold. Diagnosed with glaucoma, Mr. Stevens' sight gradually diminished, leading to total blindness. His parents, although unlettered, rendered all the help he needed. They supported as he adapted, learned new ways to navigate life. But it wasn't easy. Each day was a battle, not just against his condition, but against the fear of what was to come. Determined not to let his condition divine him, Mr. Stephen embraced every challenge. He learned to read Braille, mastered the use of a cane, and sought solace in the communities of others facing similar struggles. Mr. Stevens' story is one of resilience. He found strength in adversity, light in the darkest of times, and a renewed sense of purpose. Although Mr. Stevens lost his sight, he never lost his vision. His story is a testament to human's ability to overcome, adapt, and thrive. In the end, it's not the eyes that see the world. But a heart and mind that truly perceive its beauty. This is Mr. Stevie's journey, a journey of light even in the darkest of time. My name is Stephen Oluwafemi Idowu, the State Journal Pit Chairman. Join National Association of Persons with Special Needs. Uh, I was excited before, but I suddenly, I discovered that my eyes is go down when we talk about the fission. First, I can't see the long distance. Gradually, it's just close. But, but we try. We went to different hospitals. But according to the report, the type of uh, causing of my blindness is glaucoma which is irreversible. Due to understanding of my parents, maybe it caused it because we don't quickly uh, do something tangible concerning that site. So that is why it is irreversible as a result of glaucoma. That is why I became blind in 80s there. Our people understand that uh, information is power. Through the radio, then, before creation of Oslo State, I listened to one radio, then, they hold a program. The anchor of that program is a blind. And the visitor on that program that very day is blind as well. They are now discussed. Then I discovered that out of their discussion, I heard that blind can still go to school. That's why zeal just rise up in me that I can do like one of them. So along the line, I just moving here and there. How can I get a special school that can take care of my problem there? During that time, I went to Konak Optical Center at Ibadan, uh, Okiado area. That day, the, next, the last time I went there, the doctor told me that only God can do it. That is why I take up my mind that I want to go to school. Since I had something concerning the special education. So through that, I'm looking for somebody. I went to Iwo special school there. But during that period, there's no uh, hostel. So it's not easy for me to do that. So one of the teachers there, that woman is late now, Sister Agnes. Now told me that if you can locate Mr. Wesu in Oshobo, he's a specialist and he can take care of me. Then I'm now looking for him. 
that Baba Wesu that we are talking about is a farmer too. So I went to a Greek, okay, awesome, in order to locate that man. So when I located that man, he now told me that we have a special school. We just managed a building in All Saint Primary School then. Just a building for special school, primary school. So I went there. By that time, that man is a, a HM then, headmaster. But he take that in my this thing upon himself by training me how to write brain. Gradually we start. Then one day we are discussing, and Baba told me that blind can type. Okay, type what? Using the typewriter machine. And now move closer to Daddy. Say, Daddy, can you help me to know how to type? You now say. We don't have somebody who can teach you typewriter machine there. They are say, Daddy, please write a letter for me so I can go outside in order to learn how to type. Then Baba did. I now went to Fagbe, it's an opposite uh, Boriko there. The woman is there. Olanike or Yenike, I couldn't remember her name very well. She's the person who taught me how to handle the typewriter machine. I learned how to use typewriter machine outside the school. So the method I use then, because I'm living at Asubiaro. So after closing by one, when I got home, by four in the evening, I have one brother, Wally. He is the person that assists me to that place to go and learn typewriter machine. They dictate for me then. I just used to pick it. But one day, that madam say nobody should dictate for Femi today. He now allowed them to go. After them, he now asked me what really happened. You see, the first day you came here, I just thinking that if you don't know it, you will know you will stay at home. But I observed that as they taught you, you are now get it now. How come? And I explained to her that we have a method that we used to write and read, which is Braille. And then I learned the spelling or whatsoever. So, in our surprise, that very day, in our stopping collecting money for training from me. So, that is why I learned how to use typewriter machine with school at Austin. I can tell you, I, I was the first blind student in that school. Although the deaf are there, physically handicapped, mentally retarded are there, but I, I am the first blind person there in that school. So gradually, that school moved to that area, but the expressway just hit that school. That is why they moved to the place where you found them today which is primary school. Through that, I finished primary school in 1994. October 5, I went to Adinira Memorial Grammar School, Oboma Shore. There, I start secondary school, GS1 there. So gradually, I finished at the year 2000, exactly. From that place, I moved to Federal College of Education, or year and I finished 2004 and 2005. So 2006, I get employed September 15th there. So that is how I started. So I was posted to my former school, that uh, a place where I learned before, which is primary school. Then since then I've been working. So from that place, I get secondment to this school, but along the line, I still hope to go to a degree something. So through that, I ask government to give me permission to go and study more, and they, they grant it for me. So I went to Open University in Oshogo here, in which I just complete, I think, a year ago. But now, uh, in service, I think I spent almost 18 years ago because it's 2006, September 15, to this moment.
Mr. Steven's story is one of resilience. He found strength in adversity, light in the darkest of times, and a renewed sense of purpose teaching at Ocean State Secondary School for persons with special needs. Speaking on behalf of other persons with special needs, he maintained that disability is not contagious, enjoining parents not to stigmatize special needs children and give them equal opportunities to thrive. Our disability is not contagious. It is not contagious. All my children, they see clearly. It's also, it doesn't affect my wife as well. And we don't know the reason. Being disabled doesn't mean that it is a, it's a thing that can spread to others. No, it's not disease. He also appealed to the government to invest massively in the education of special needs students as they do for conventional schools. Concern those who are learning, we need correct materials, more than one, that can easy learning for them. Speaking in similar tone, Mr. Ayegbanyi Olawale Solomon, the principal, Oshun State Secondary School for persons with special need, who applauded Oshun State government for showing love towards the students, further appeal to the government to assist the process in signing a special needs bill into law. We cannot but thank the government of the day for their effort to see that the special needs students and individuals are well catered for. In the first place, all of us know that uh, without the effort of the government in provision of uh, not only the feeding, the accommodation and other necessary uh, educational needs, the school cannot be in existence. So we are very, very happy that we have a listening government who has been the who has been playing the role of of the father for the school in different ways. So we are very grateful and we will continue to be grateful for them. Another important area is that uh, anytime we are in need of uh, teaching material, so through the assistance of the another hands of the government, either Ministry of Education or SUBEB, they always come to our need. But uh, the condition of special needs school is very, very demanding. You know, we have various handicapping conditions. One at hand, which is threatening our, our school, is that of security. A school of the nature should be enclosed, should be, should be in a very secure and safe environment. And uh, we are always at the uh, mercy of God anytime we think along that line because our yearning along that line is, is yet to be met. Although we thank God for the uh, our Baba, the Commissioner of Education has been there personally to see things for himself. And our father also, PS Education, has been there several times to notice some things. And that gave us the courage to think that very soon, very soon, 
they know our problems and they, they will come to our aid. So we are equally using this medium to let them know that we know, I mean, we appreciate their effort for at least uh, encouraging us and enable us to know that as soon as possible, that problem of especially fencing, perimeter fencing of the school should be catered for. So, but until that is done, oh, we cannot say it is done. But we strongly believe that very soon they will see to the uh, the problem. <laughs>